So in a coding classroom, you're gonna see learners learning at different speeds. And it's really important to have some type of differentiation available to the students. So that would be maybe having more advanced projects where after they've learned one concept, you can have some sort of goal or project that they can eventually get to that's a little more open-ended. So maybe applying, if they were learning about loops and they did the very detailed structured lesson, they did the application of loops, it's sort of like, okay, well create something of loops yourself in this different type of encode environment. Maybe it was in Scratch, maybe it was in MakeArt, maybe it was in Minecraft. How can you create that loop in a different environment? And then also being able to walk around the classroom and being figuring out, okay, maybe the student is struggling, struggling a little bit. How can I support them? How can I provide more structures for them? And maybe it's not you providing those structures. It's taking that advanced student who actually is progressing really fast and having them partner up together to be able to work together and collaborate and say, okay, how can you apply your learning now, what you learned, you went through these steps really quickly and work with the students who's struggling a little bit and work together. Together. And also when you're on the Keno, there's a lot of differentiation already available for that. So if you're in Make Art, we have different types of challenges from basic to medium to more advanced um, open-ended challenges. And you can have students progress through these different challenges at their own speed and it's perfectly fine whichever area they stop or go in. In planning your classroom to promote differentiation, there are three types of outcomes that we like to think about. Outcomes that all students will be able to achieve, outcomes that most students will be able to achieve, and outcomes that some students will be able to achieve. So for example, when planning the session, if you know that the most important concept is that students learn how to follow instructions and learn that coding requires very specific syntax and rules, then you might say that all students will be able to follow basic instructions and complete one basic challenge. Most students might be able to complete three challenges while only some students will be able to complete three challenges, go back, change the code, change the size, change the color, in order to make the creation their own, because they've really internalized the concepts and been able to add their own twist to those things. So with good planning, it's important that you look at the outcomes, and you look at the outcomes that some of those students, your advanced learners, will be able to achieve, and to come prepared with resources or tools that they can use to achieve those outcomes. When we talk about differentiation in the classroom, we mean that all students are not doing the same thing at the same point in time. So that might take the form of different reading groups to promote different reading abilities. Or you might differentiate based on engagement. Some students might like coding art, whilst others might like coding music. When we talk about differentiation in the classroom, we mean a space where students can learn different things at the same time. This might be based on their abilities or their engagement styles. A way that you can prepare for a differentiation in your classroom is in advance, think of some probing questions that you would want to ask your students. Really, the possibilities are limitless when you're going to come to coding and your students will complete challenges. And if you can think of the probing questions you want to ask them to try to figure out, modify, remix their own code, it can help prepare them to kind of figure out their own sort of goals and objectives they want to do after completing a challenge.